to reply by telling them a little story about the first time I was asked that question. It was a couple of years ago now, and a, and a young, attractive bride-to-be came up to me after a service and asked me just that question. Father, what is the church's attitude to fellatio? And I replied, well, you know, Joanne, I'd like to tell you, but unfortunately, I don't know what fellatio is. <laughs> and so she showed me. <laughs> and ever since, whenever anyone has asked me the question, Father, what is the church's attitude to fellatio? I always reply, well, you know, I'd like to tell you. <laughs> I don't know what fellatio is. <laughs> Next came my trusted best man. Um, oh, right, right. Uh, uh, right, well, uh, right. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow survivors of that stunning stag party, <laughs> how did those two girls get under the table, and what the hell were they up to with that toothpaste? <laughs> uh, right, well, um, well, uh, just before I left the house um, this afternoon, <laughs> I said to myself, you know, the last thing you must do is forget your speech. Um, and so, sure enough, when, um, when, when I left the house, <laughs> um, uh, the last thing I did, <laughs> yes, you guessed it, was to forget my speech. So, um, so it's all ad lib, I'm afraid. Well, now, now, where should I begin? Um, I'd like to begin now. Uh, uh, right, well, 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 I've known the groom ever since we first went to school together at the age of eight. And you know, he hasn't changed a bit. Uh, well, that's not quite true, of course. He didn't have his beard then. <laughs> um, um, and I tell you this, he wouldn't have been able to do whatever he was doing last night with those two extraordinary, <laughs> extraordinary, um, extraordinary how little people change, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, uh, uh, although I know I've changed a great deal, because I used to be an absolute ass. <laughs> Blurting things out when I shouldn't. Uh, uh, for instance, this afternoon, I'm sure I wouldn't have been able to resist mentioning the bizarre sight that greeted my eyes when I opened this man's bedroom door earlier this morning. Um, yes, but uh, but uh, but enough of that. Uh, he started making gestures at me now, which I think uh, means he wants me to cut my speech short. Um, so suffice to say that I think he'll make a ripping husband, uh, and I think his wife's ripping too, <laughs> and I can only hope that, that the dress will hold out. Uh, um, so I'd like to propose a toast um, to go with the pate. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, to the groom and to his lovely horse, uh, wife. Uh, it's, all, it's all starting to come back to me now. <laughs> um, and I just know that their marriage will be as happy and satisfied as I was when I paid off those two prostitutes earlier this morning. <laughs> And finally, my loving father-in-law provided the perfect end to a perfect day. Uh, ladies and gentlemen and friends of my daughter. 
There comes a time in every wedding reception when the man who paid for the damn thing is allowed to speak a word or two of his own. And I should like to take this opportunity, sloshed as I may be, to say a word or two about Martin. As far as I'm concerned, my daughter could not have chosen a more delightful, charming, witty, responsible, wealthy, let's not deny it, well-placed, good-looking, and fertile young man <laughs> than Martin as her husband. And I therefore ask the question, why the hell did she marry Gerald instead? <laughs> Because Gerald is the sort of man we used to describe at school as a complete prick. <laughs> if I may use a gardening simile here, if his entire family may be likened to a compost heap, and I think they can, then Gerald is the biggest weed growing out of it. I think he's the sort of man people emigrate to avoid. <laughs> I remember the first time I met Gerald, I said to my wife, she's the lovely woman propping up that horrendous old lush of a mother of his, either this man is suffering from serious brain damage, or the new vacuum cleaners arrive. <laughs> As for his family, they are quite simply the most intolerable herd of steaming social animals I've ever had the misfortune of turning my nose up to. I spurn you as I would spurn a rabid dog. <laughs> I would like to propose a toast to the caterers. <laughs> and to the pigeon who crapped on the groom's family's limousine at the church. <laughs> As for the rest of you around this table, not directly related to me, you can sod off. I wouldn't trust any of you to sit the right way on a toilet seat. <laughs> <laughs>